Go. Hello, everyone. This is Roos from Ready AI. I am honored to be joined here by my colleague, friend, very good friend, whom I know, uh, whom I know for a number of years, Erica Wilson. Erica, welcome. Hi. Erica, you work hard uh, uh, with uh, Professor Turetsky of Carnegie Mellon to design a lesson plan. And I think it is a very unique lesson plan. If I recall correctly, it is called Exploring the Strengths, Weaknesses, and Ethics of Chat GPT in Classrooms. And, uh, and uh, Chat GPT, everybody's talking about it. First of all, what is Chat GPT for the educators, parents, or some students that are watching us? Sure, Chat GPT is a language model. What that means is that it's a form of AI that uh, basically simulates human language. Uh, it takes large amounts of books and material that it gathered from the internet, and it predicts one word upon the next upon the next to basically simulate what might be a human response to a question. That is a really, really, really good definition. Thanks for that. Now, why is such a big hype? Why is such a big fuss? Everybody's talking about it. What is going on? I think it's because it has the ability to really simulate human speech and human communication um, in, in a way that is really unprecedented, right? These new language models, uh, there's another one with Bing that currently just came out. The New York Times covered it not too long ago. Uh, these really have an ability to simulate the way that we communicate. But they can do it in some ways even better because they can draw upon massive amounts of material that might take the average human days or even months to research all the necessary information. So you can ask it to create a poem uh, of a certain variety, a sonnet, for instance, and it can do it very quickly. Whereas a human may have a much harder time trying to get the rhymes correctly or even learning what a sonnet is in the first place. That is super cool. Now, you and uh, David Turetsky, by the way, folks, uh, there's going to be an interview with Dave Turetsky as well. It's going to be on this channel, so feel free to tune in. But uh, Erica, let me ask you, because you've, uh, you've in, the, in the past number of years, you've, you've designed a, a number of lesson plans. You talk to educators. You're an educator, educator both at the K-12 and also at the college level as well. Um, tell me a little bit about why it's important for us to teach about these large language models, generative AI, in this case, chat GPT, and what's so important about it? And when you talked about it in your lesson plan, weaknesses, strengths, ethical issues, what are we talking about? Sure. Well, these are tools not going away. Uh, they're certainly going to be used more and more. Uh, we know that kids are already using them to create papers for their classes. And so we want to really teach them not just uh, we don't want to say that I remember when I, when I was a kid, like MySpace came out, everybody said, oh, well, you're not supposed to use these things. You're not supposed to use social media. Um, it was sort of a taboo thing in some ways. Uh, and that really just sort of increased the interest in it and increased perhaps even the misuse because we weren't on the front end of, of the social media curve and we didn't really realize the importance it was going to have. The same thing goes for AI, whether it be ChatGPT or like Dolly 2 or any of these kinds of tools that are exist that exist and are becoming publicly available and and, and becoming really part of the, the 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 currency of education nowadays. We don't want to be in the back end of students learning about these. We want to be on the front end. We want students to know how to use them safely and effectively, how not to use them, for instance, for academic uh, integrity issues or for cheating. Uh, but we also want them to know how they work, what's going on in the background, as well as some of the ethical questions about what, what, is, what does it mean to gain knowledge? What does it mean to be educated? Is it just a matter of like plugging the answer into AI and then copying and pasting that? Or is it about really using AI to help us uh, access information and tend to maybe to continue to use AI to find better ways of expression for ourselves and not simply just rely on the system to do all the work for us? That's very interesting. I, I love the way you designed the lesson plan. There is an amazing agenda. You know, there's warm up exercises, presentation of the GPT, you know, successes. And then there's a practice element of it where GPT actually fails. And then also there's a production segment, as you call it. Uh, how do chat GPT and other language models really work? Uh, so that's, that's a very, very interesting agenda. First of all, tell us about the agenda, the construction of the lesson plan itself particularly for educators. What does it look like? 
how can they bring it to the classroom? And um, as of now, recording of this, I have over 330 teachers that have downloaded it, which is good. Folks downloaded it, it's free by the way. Uh, click at the bottom, of, there's a link at the bottom of this video, you can click and then you, uh, on it and then you can access the, uh, the lesson plan itself. But tell us a little bit about the, uh, the, 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 uh, the structure of the lesson plan and the fact that it's aligned with various standards. Uh, tell us a bit about that. Sure, sure. Well, let's go ahead and begin with, for instance, what we call the um, presentation phase, right? The first part of the lesson. We ask teachers to bring in a childhood less story that, that is relevant to the kids. The one that we use in the lesson is Goldilocks and the Three Bears, because many people around the world are familiar with that kind of that famous story. But any story would work, right? Because again, ChatGPT is drawing on enormous amounts of material. Uh, it knows most of these childhood stories from different cultures. So we take the story and we ask ChatGPT to try to retell the story. Uh, tell us the uh, the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears from the Mama Bear's perspective. Or tell it to us as a Shakespearean tragedy. And uh, ChatGPT is able to do that. And we can discuss the results. What do they show us? What are maybe even some of the, the commonalities that you see across the different um, productions of the story? And students have fun with this. They can bring in a story that they like. They can have it retold in a certain way. You could even have it retold in a different modality, for instance, like a poem or something along those lines. Uh, exploring the weaknesses, this is what Dr. Tretzky calls a moving target. Because as we present the weaknesses, the developers of ChatGPT, OpenAI, as well as these large language models are constantly refining them. So for instance, before, a few months ago, you were able to say, tell me a fake story about ruse. And it would generate this uh, fake story, perhaps even insulting or might what might constitute slander or libel. Uh, but now there's lots of safeguards in the system that don't allow uh, individuals to be insulted. They don't allow it to be, it doesn't allow for people to be um, maligned in ways. And you certainly can't use famous political figures. So for instance, if you put a president or a, a ruler of a country, um, it won't make up fake information about those people. Because again, people could misuse it. So even OpenAI is already aware of the weaknesses and is constantly seeking to, to, to fortify them. So you'll probably find us refining the lesson very often to identify new weaknesses, ones that still haven't been addressed, or maybe new ones that might crop up. But the weaknesses is a moving target. They're going to be constantly changing because the developers of, of OpenAI have a vested interest in making a good product that doesn't have weaknesses. And so it's sort of fun on our part to continue to identify those. And then finally, we ask students to really think about how this works. What's going on in the background? What is What are the moving parts that make this happen? And so we have them do a little practice exercise unplugged away from the computers for a moment because that's ultimately really important too, right? We want students to be able to engage their teachers, engage their class, engage their, their classmates, their friends, and not simply be stuck one-on-one -on -one with the computer, right? We want them to be able to think about how this works and to discuss the ethics behind it. And all of these are aligned with the five big ideas. The five big ideas are um, standards. Uh, they're sort of nascent. They're still in the progress of, of being developed. Uh, created by AI for K-12. It's a um, publicly funded organization here in the U.S. that's establishing AI standards for education across the K-12 level. And we also align the lesson with the ESD standards, uh, which is much more of a, a computer science uh, standard across uh, curriculums um, here in the U.S. and abroad. Thank you so much for that. And by the way, folks, there's a link both for ISTE and also AI for K-12 NSF-funded program at the bottom of this video. So you can uh, learn more about both both standards and also what they are doing. There are great work that's being done by both, both AI for K-12 and ISTE. So let me wrap this up, uh, Erica, with, uh, with, uh, with this. Uh, you've done a wonderful job with uh, uh, Dave Turetsky to design this. And uh, I guess the target market is third grade through sixth grade. Is that correct? That's correct. That's, that's sort of the target age level at this point with this particular lesson. That's right. Are you planning on designing, uh, this is a question we oftentimes ask, get asked by educators, for other grade bands? And uh, should we be anticipating it? Uh, uh, or uh, is this going to be just focusing on third grade through sixth grade? 
Sure. Yeah, we're absolutely working on some high school and, and upper middle school grade level bands uh, uh, lessons for ChatGPT. We would like to do one for K to two. Of course, it requires ChatGPT is entirely language based. That's one of the challenges that presents to kindergartners, first graders and so forth, um, because they don't have the fluency in, in reading and writing um, as maybe the older students do. So we, we will get something for them as well. That's going to take a lot more thinking about how to interact with younger learners, but we'll definitely have something very soon for grades seven, eight, nine, and so on and beyond. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Erica. And uh, uh, I let you have the last words for our audience, particularly educators that are watching us. Uh, is there anything else you would like to share with them uh, about this lesson plan or any other thing when it comes down to their AI? education journey or other lesson plans that you'd, li you'd like to, uh, them to know about? Sure. I, I think, you know, before I got into AI, I taught exclusively English, literature, composition. Uh, that's sort of all my background. And so I, I often felt unprepared or ill-equipped to, to teach AI because I don't have a computer science degree. I didn't graduate from Carnegie Mellon's AI program. Uh, and yet there are so many resources available. This is just one of the resources available to help our students learn about AI. Because again, we don't want our students to be left behind uh, wherever they are, whatever country they're in. We want them to be able to keep up with the latest developments. But most of all, we don't want them just to keep up. We want them to actively learn to use these source resources in ways that improve their life and the world around them. That's fantastic. Totally agree with you. Uh, uh, folks, uh, there is a link to Erica's information at the bottom of this video. And uh, uh, Erica, if I, I, I may take this opportunity to say that you're also do, um, uh, you do speak to educators, you do speak at conferences. And this is another opportunity to talk about a very important development, ChatGPT, or other, uh, uh, in, a, in a way, large language model and generative AI. And this is not the video for it, but we will have another conversation with Erica about Dolly and image generation, which they have uh, done a wonderful job, Erica and uh, uh, folks at CMU, Dave Turetsky at CMU, and they worked on lesson plans on that front, which has been used uh, for, in, it's, it's been a number of months that it's been being utilized in classrooms uh, around the world. Erica, thanks so much for being with us. You did a wonderful job and you and your team were very proud of that lesson plan and it is folks available free yes free everything free everything we do on the lesson plans at ready ai is free for you it's available click at the bottom of this link uh, uh video uh, there's a link and then you can access the lesson plan and we will have as erica you said we're going to have new versions of it coming out as the move we have the moving target on particularly on the weaknesses of uh, we'll have to continue being we'll have to continue keeping up with with what open ai does right well so there'll be constantly new versions that address the weaknesses and so we encourage you to check back regularly especially if you find one of the weaknesses all of a sudden doesn't work anymore got it got it erica wilson thanks so much for your time and looking forward to our next conversation folks thanks for joining us join us next time keep uh keep up to date with our new lesson plans on edu.readyai.org till then